Another knee slapper from the Tea Party crowd. They get a phony Rachel Maddow to try to crash their convention, then dramatically announce they've been her. That's next, but first time for Countdown's number two story, tonight's worst persons in the world. The bronze to RNC Chairman Michael Steele. As some unhappy Republicans grumble about the job he's doing, Steele goes on ABC Radio today and says, quote, I'm looking them in the eye and say, I've had enough of it. You don't want me in the job, fire me. But until then, shut up. Get with the program or get out of the way. Steele made these remarks while continuing his book tour, the book from which he is keeping the profits. Understandably, it's his book. Problem is, the Washington Times claims, quote, RNC ethics rules appear to forbid anyone working for the National Committee from taking outside income or using a committee position for personal gain. This is called pulling an Oscar Wilde. Never sue for libel when you're guilty of what they've said about you. Our runner-up, Lonesome Rhodes Beck, still living the martyr fantasy of the far right, asks about President Obama, question is when a press conference becomes hostile or when a press conference becomes like it should be like it even was under George W. Bush they actually start to ask this president and back him up to the wall and not allow him to get away with blatant lies how does this president react wow yeah remember those Bush press conferences when Fox News didn't allow him to get away with that blatant lie about how he hadn't decided to invade Iraq months years before he did when the New York Times didn't allow Bush to get away with that blatant lie about the weapons of mass destruction when Les Consolving didn't allow him to get away with that blatant lie about how no one could have predicted 9-11, those were the days! Plus, all those times Jeff Gannon backed him up to the wall. But our winner, Sherman Frederick, publisher of the newspaper the Las Vegas Review Journal, writing a column about it that no self-respecting newspaper would have printed, not one that employed a fact checker anyway, but then again he's the publisher who's going to stop him. For three days, our president failed to address his people directly on Abdul Muttalib's failed effort to blow up a commercial flight over Detroit on Christmas Day. All of this on top of President Obama's noticeable refusal to characterize our struggle as a war on terror. In the wake of fierce criticism, Obama now talks tough about keeping America safe. But in the two cases of domestic terrorism since 9-11, both on Obama's watch, red flags flew aplenty. All right, it was three days after an attempt on an airliner until Obama formally smoked, spoke. It was six days after an attempt on an airliner until Bush formally spoke. And Obama has now made 37 uses of the root word terror in his six statements about Detroit. Oh, in the two cases of domestic terrorism since 9-11, both on Obama's watch. Publisher Sherm apparently missed those pesky anthrax terror attacks in the winter of 2001-2002 and the shoe bomber terror attack and if you're counting Detroit you've got to count the shoe bomber and the 2002 terror attack on the El Al ticket counter at LAX and the DC sniper terror attacks in 2002 and the guy who drove his SUV into a group of pedestrians at Chapel Hill to honor his role model Mohammed Atta in 2006 it's one thing if some greasy politician gets the memo and parrots this crap in public but this guy owns a newspaper which would obviously be better off if he delivered it rather than tried to write for it. Sherman Facts Optional Frederick, the publisher of the Las Vegas Review-Journal, today's worst person in the world!